Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. This video here is part 3 on my VL Turbo project. This video is going to be covering the prep and paintwork on the exterior of this boot lid and at the end of the video we'll also give it a polish up. The previous video we painted the inside of the boot lid and we did the repairs and primer. We also blocked this boot lid down so that's why I've left out the block work on this video because the previous video included that. So now that we've um, I'm happy that I've got that boot lid straight enough to start using the orbital sander. I gave the entire boot lid a wipe over with that dry powdered guide coat. It's a 3M guide coat. Um, it's one of those things. It's not necessary to use a guide coat. However, it can help you pick up a sanding scratch or two. But it is not the be all and end all. Sometimes you can remove all of that black guide coat. That doesn't necessarily mean you've removed all those sanding scratches. So that's why you see me, um, I'm getting my head nice and close. And I'm actually uh, inspecting for those sanding scratches because as you can see here, it is not foolproof. So that's why I'm wiping over it, get the dust off, get your air blower. Once you've finished with the 320, blow all that dust off and make sure you can't see any sanding scratches. On a colour like this, which is um, a light silver, sort of bluey silver colour, it's very important that you do get your prep work right because if you miss any of those sanding scratches, it's actually going to show up in your base coat colour. Um, reason I'm doing it this way, I went 180 first, 320 is going to remove the 180 scratches a lot nicer. If you went straight over your 180 with, say, 400, you're more likely of missing some. And you probably go through, say, four... Uh, uh, sanding pads of 400 grit whereas you'll just use say one piece of 320 and then one piece of 500 and the job will be done I, oh, sorry I think I, did, I ended up using two pieces of 500 there so obviously finished the 320 in got a 400 sanding uh, soft back sanding sponge went over all the edges um, also making sure that you feel those edges by hand make sure you can't feel any orange peel left from your primer and also any uh, furry bits or anything that doesn't feel right and it just wants to feel nice and smooth once that's done give it another dust off and then get the 500 grit onto it and 500 is usually pretty right to uh, paint over um, you can go anywhere from sort of 500 to 1200 with metallics and you should be pretty right um, I wouldn't go any uh, finer than 1200 you you could start making it actually a little bit too smooth to even paint over and you might actually uh, lose adhesion because you won't have um, enough for the base coat to bite into um, so now I'm happy with that I give it a really good dust off put it in the booth I've just got a nice clean rag wiping around all those edges before I back mask it because as you can see I've already done the inside in the previous video so I want to keep get that nice and clean. Any little bits of dust there, they could be either blowing out and then um, create dust in the final paintwork, or they could also get um, caught up in that edge and just make for an ugly edge. So this is all I'm doing here, just really simple back masks. Just get your piece of, um, I'm using 36mm 3M masking tape here. Um, you know, it's not quite as big as the 2 inch. I think the 2 inch is a bit overkill, but that's just me. Um, some people prefer the wider tape. Main reason I'm actually including this part, I've actually been requested to include how I back mask a panel that I've already painted the inside of. So, um, yeah, just pretty simple process really. Um, and then just get your masking, masking paper roll with your piece of tape on it on that masking machine, pull it out and put it over. Just make sure it's nice and tight. You don't want it flapping around obviously when you're painting. You've got the air coming out of the spray gun. Anyway, next up we're going to be wiping it down with um, some wax and grease removing solvent. I've got that in that brake cleaner bottle. That's just a worth brake cleaner bottle. Um, they're a good invention, a good idea to use. Um, they do save on rags and they also do save on the wax and grease remover as well because you're only getting um, the amount that you need on there because uh, if you do it with just soaking a rag in wax and grease remover then that ra rag is obviously still full of wax and grease remover it gets thrown in the corner and um, it all just evaporates out so um, this is a, a more cost effective and it's also easier as well I find you don't get um, wax and grease remover all over the place you just get it where you need it um, so just I usually like to use two rags when I'm wiping off I just go on over it initially and that rag soaks up most of it and then go over it with another clean one after. Yeah, most of you guys know that I'm actually working in my own shop now. I obviously have to buy everything now, so reason I don't use those lint-free cloths is because I think they're personally overpriced and 
to the amount of money extra that you pay for them and what they do, um, I really don't see the cost benefits in them. These are bleached rags and they're good cotton rags. They're absorb they absorb quite well. They do possibly leave a little bit of lint behind. Um, that's the real advantage of the other ones. But if you've got a good tack rag, you'll tack rag all of that off anyway. And this job here is a perfect example of being able to get good results just with a normal, nice, clean cotton rag. So you'll see at the end that this boot lid was basically off the gun. There was one tiny little bit of dust that landed in it, and uh, I can get great results with that. Anyway, um, I've left most of the footage for the rest of this unedited until it's painted. There was one or two bits I cut out, obviously, the waiting times in between coats I didn't um, leave in. But, um, yeah, I just, just thought I'd give you guys a look at exactly every step that I'm doing. So, obviously, give it a good uh, good stir up the paint. That's just my base coat color. It's Chromax um, 6000 base coat. That's a 3 to 1 ratio. So, uh, three parts base coat and then uh, one part of uh, reducer. I've just got a universal reducer, just a Duke's Home reducer. I use that in clears, primers, base coats, everything. And um, just give that a good stir in, and next up we'll just be grabbing a uh, paint strainer and always strain my paint into my gun. So that's one thing you might uh, see me do now and then, um, not sticking 100% to the mixing ratios. I went, ended up going 3 to 1, and I thought, you know what, that's just a tad thick for what I want to do. Sometimes if your base coat's too thick, it'll go on a bit chunky, especially with some of these metallics. So I thinned it out just that little extra touch just for this job. Um, obviously you don't want to over thin it or you, or you will lose coverage. Um, this colour actually does cover quite well though. So um, I've found that the it's got a very fine metallic in it. I've found that the finer the metallic, the better coverage you're going to get. So the coarser metallic, they need to put a lot more binder in it to float that metallic up and it's going to cover a lot worse than the finer metallic. So. Um, just getting that tack rag, I like to keep it in the pot there because as you guys probably know, my booth here hasn't got any heat in it, so I, that actually enables me to leave my paint mixing bench in the spray booth, so it works out quite well, I don't even have to leave, it's got my air fed respirator, I whack that on and um, just stay in there, so it actually works out quite well, I'm well protected all, also when I'm mixing my paint, because um, we, yeah, the, the entire booth is ventilated and got a good setup now so just giving it a really good tack cloth I like to use a nice clean one when they get too old just throw them out they're not expensive I think they're about a dollar fifty each if a tack ray is going to put you out of business well then yeah you're gonna you got bigger problems than that basically um, I like to go over it and say two or even three times always tack rag two or three times. Hope you guys appreciate all these vids I do. I'll tell you what, sometimes it's hard to push myself up on a Sunday morning to um, spend five or six hours to um, make these videos, but I do enjoy it. It's it's a good hobby for me, and um, you guys make it all worthwhile. So, yeah, just going on with my base coat. This is my SGK 600BV, also known as the FLG5. This is my workhorse spray gun. I tell you what, I use this all the time. It's awesome. It's just it's my go-to gun these days, and gets great results. And I can really just throw it around. And because it's not overly expensive, I don't feel as if um, I've got to be so delicate with it. With my starter, which I actually end up using later on in the video, I'm, I'm a bit uh, a bit precious with it, I guess. When you're spending eight hundred plus dollars on a spray gun. Um, you want to take care of it, with, but with this thing, you know, I just throw it around and it just keeps performing quite well. I just give it a good clean, obviously, at the end of um, using it, and yeah, it's a great gun. I highly recommend it. To, to be honest, this is probably my best, I would say the best budget spray gun that, on the market, to be honest. Uh, it's got a great big fan, put, pumps out a lot of fluid. There's also a primer version of it. I'm pretty sure there's a 1.8 and a 2.2, but I've got the 1.4 here. So it does base coat, color, clear, 2K, everything uh, other than primers. You can do thin primers with it. So if you're using, say, a wet-on-wet -wet primer, you can use it. But um, I decided actually to leave that drying time in just so you guys can see how quick the solvent base coat actually does dry. And this was not a hot day by any means. This day would have been about, say, 15 to 20 degrees when I was actually painting this. So, 
uh, started to cool down over here in Perth at this time of year. Um, and in the coming videos, in the, sorry, in the coming months, I'll be doing videos just dedicated on how to get the best results um, when painting in the cold. I mean, yeah, this isn't cold, cold. I mean, 15 degrees Celsius isn't that cold, but um, in the next couple of months, it will get pretty cold and it's not going to be nice to paint in, but I do have a few tricks up my sleeves, so stay tuned for that. At the very end of this video also, I've included a little bit of footage of where I'm up to on this car. Um, guys that have seen this uh, video set right from the start will probably remember the boot floor was all rusted out, so today I've got a mate come in and help me, which is nice of him, and we cut the rust out. I cut it all out myself actually, and he just gave me a hand just tech screwing it in and um, doing a bit of welding. I did most of the work myself, but it was good to have someone, you know, giving me a couple of pointers here and there, so, um, now I've got the second coat of base coat on, I wore the out for 10 minutes after that second coat because it was on a little bit heavier, then coming back in and putting my third and final coat, just sort of a medium wet coat, I don't like putting it on too heavy, um, however this colour, um, I find it pretty forgiving, some people struggle with these kind of colours, but, um, I find as long as you've got a nice big fan on the spray gun, then you're usually pretty right. Uh, running it at about 20, 25 psi. Um, obviously, the temperature of the day is going to vary your pressure settings. Um, I like to have the the fan wound right open on this gun, and have that fluid wound just about right out too. Just have it say one turn in, um, just pump it on. So there's the base coat all done. Next up, I know a few people have been waiting to see the starter jet in action on a car. And I'm still very impressed with it. However, in hindsight, I probably should have bought a 1.2 mil fluid tip on it. I think 1.3 is nearly too much. Um, it's got a massive fan on this gun, and it just about pumps out too much clear. So if you guys hang around to the end, you'll see I ended up having to sand the entire boot down to remove a bit of solvent boil, which is caused from uh, too much clear on there. Um, I just pumped it on too hard. I was getting a bit carried away. Sometimes I do that, just smash too much clear, and especially on a job like this, like I, it's my own car and it's a full respray, so having uh, a nice dead flat finish is a good thing. Whereas if I'm doing smash repairs and stuff like that, I actually have to uh, replicate the factory orange peel, so you can't just go and put it on too heavy. Anyway, we'll get on to the gun settings for the Sarta Jet 5000 BRP. 1.3 as I mentioned before. Um, I just bucked that fan off just a quarter of a turn. I've set the pressure to one bar pressure and I've wound that fluid right in and then come out two turns. I found one and a half, it's just restricting too much and just not getting quite enough on um, and any more and you're just putting too much on. So um, play around with those settings, whatever feels right for you and the conditions will change obviously. Um, the settings that you're going to want to use as well, so don't forget about that. Um, the clear coat that I'm using on this job is just some Duke Zone 2K clear. It's an MS clear. It's cheap stuff, but hey, I can get really nice results with it. Um, I've actually since decided, uh, since I've painted this, I've decided, you know, I'm going to flow coat the entire car. Um, one of my followers recently said he'd like to see a video on how to do flow coating. Um, and I, I saw that comment after polishing this boot lid. So I'll still take you guys through the polishing stage, but I think later on I'm just going, when the rest of the car's painted, I'll end up just getting this boot lid and give it a flow coat to make it look real nice. I might even paint the entire car first with some MS clear and then get some good HS clear to go over the top of that with some flow coating and see, see what kind of results we get and see how good it lasts. So sorry about that bloody dog yapping in the background. Anyway, back to the job. Um, I've slowed down on the second coat, as you can see, I'll put you guys up on the tripod just to give you a bit of a different aspect of my painting. Um, and yeah, this thing absolutely pumps it on. I'm real happy with how this side jet's been going. It's my new clear gun. Um, does it mean that I don't like the Devilvis anymore? Uh, no, it doesn't. Devilvis is an awesome gun, and to be honest, value for money, 
yeah, the developers is probably better, but you know what, since making these videos, um, I've really started to appreciate a lot more guns. Like, I always used to just be a developer's guy, and I'm like, well, you know what, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's no need to get another gun. It was just developers all the way, and they were great guns. And, um, yeah, it's just opened my, broadened my aspect on uh, different spray guns. Like, I love some of those NSI Water, Supernova's a great gun, Bellaria's a great gun. Um, I'm looking into getting some of those Eastwood guns. I'd love to get them, the Segolas, and just do reviews for you guys. Um, I plan one day to have a review on every single spray gun that is on the market, but hey, it's just going to take time, and obviously these guns don't come for free, and the videos also don't edit themselves, so yeah, I really do take a lot of time and effort on making these vids, so I hope you guys do appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for us, it does help me out, helps my videos rank in search results and stuff like that, it helps other people find me. Um, Oh yeah, don't forget to check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff, whatever you like, whatever you're into, there's links in the descriptions of my videos. So, there you go, you can see uh, after it dried down, um, it did start to solve and pop a bit. Nothing too bad, um, it's just because I put it on that, just that touch too heavy, but it's nothing that's not going to polish out. Um, so I'm using my Kovacs Bufflex 75mm uh, orbital sander. 1500 grit and it's a dry system so it's a great system it cost me about four hundred dollars all up that's for the polisher and one of each of the sanding grit so it comes with the 1500 it comes with the black and the uh, green pads so i think the black and green it doesn't actually say on them but i'm thinking they're about two and a half and three and a half thousand um but look, for a silver or a white, all you really need to do is just hit it with a 1500. It cuts it cuts into it really nice. Um, it it uh, removes any sort of dust and denims, and it's easy to polish up on a colour like this. However, if I was doing a black, I'd probably go over it with the um, black or the black pads, which is a 3500 or even just the green ones, which is about 2500. So. Um, next up, the polish I'm using is the Juice Super C. It's a great quality cutter. Um, it does leave a lot of swirl marks in there, but it, it does remove those um, denimbing scratches. So I like to use it, and then it's pretty important that you do use a swirl remover after, else you will be left with those deeper swirl marks from it. Um, so the foam pad I'm using for cutting is this um, just a orange pad. There's white ones out there as well. Um, what's the difference in between this and the final glaze pad? Basically the size of the holes in the foam and it's just a bit stiffer as well. So the, the black pad I like to use for polishing and the holes in that are a lot finer so it's going to be left leaving you with a uh, less swell marks. That's the basic idea behind it. The colour light, like this is pretty forgiving when it comes to polishing and to be honest this is actually the first car of my own that I've ever denimbed and cut and polished. Um, whenever I've previously done my own cars, I've always just got them off the gun and lived with it. Maybe have one or two tiny little bits of dust, but I, yeah, never usually bothered polishing my own cars. It's a job that most people in the trade hate. I've never met a painter that says they absolutely love uh, polishing. It's one of those things that as an apprentice you're forced to cut and polish other people's work, the tradesmen's, and um, yeah, it's, uh, it sucks, but in, your, in the right frame of mind, if you get into it, and it's not too bad, uh, the results that you get at the end are actually quite, um, quite satisfying, and you can take a lot of pride in that side of it, however, the job itself, as a painter, I'm not too fond of it, so, there you go, that was just the 3M Final Glaze, um, they used to call it Perfected 3 Machine Polish, but they did change the name, um, and it's still exactly the same stuff, so that's a good one. I like using that. Polishing is one of those things. There's so many brands, just like paint systems and all that. There's so many different brands on the market. No one's right or wrong. They've all got good quality stuff, but you might find one just works a little bit better than the other one for yourself. So, you know, go for it. But this is just a system I like to use. Um, for a colour like this, I'm not going to use the orbital polish up to remove swirls because you're just not going to see them. Um, it doesn't mean they're not there, they're still there, but they, but because of the colour it doesn't reflect the light as much as the, um, the darker colour, so if it was black then yeah, I'd definitely use the orbital polisher. Um, if you had a Rube's Bigfoot polisher, yep, yeah, that'd be ideal, but also you can just use a, a, a big orbital sander, just your normal one that you sand your panel down with and put a, a foam pad on that. 
as you can see, I've got a quite a nice result. Um, you know, got quite happy with how it came up. There's one or two little waves or slight ripples in there, but it's a forgiving colour for that. Um, here we go. This is what I was telling you guys about. That um, I'm going to give you a look at the work that I did actually this morning. I'm going to get my ass together and uh, edit some footage up for this rust repair on the boot floor. So I just cut the entire, cut most of it out to start off with, and gave, like, let me in there, and I could get get further in and um, cut it out. We then got the new section ground it up, tech screwed it in, got those screws, um, welded it in, ground, ground it off. So that's going to be the next video. So stay tuned uh, for the next video and that will be taking you right through every step of the boot floor. Hang around at the end, there's a couple more videos if you haven't already seen them. Thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.